Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. In November, after caving in a local pit off of Popcorn Road in Monroe County, I decided to wait on the surface while my two fellow cavers did the next pit. This was near Harrodsburg. I was sitting in the back of my Jeep reading. I saw a silhouette moving south just within the tree line. Thinking this was the landowner, I got off my Jeep and walked up to the tree line. The Jeep was parked in a small, grassy clearing used for camping, and the two pits were approximately 50 feet east of the Jeep with the fence and tree line 10 to 20 feet beyond the pits. The trees were bare of cover, and it was a bit overcast. I waited at the fence line, and I kept an eye on the silhouette moving towards me. I called out once, twice, with no reply. The thickness and number of trees and the overcast made it hard to see the details of the silhouette. The silhouette moved past me, and the only noise I heard was the slight crunching of leaves on the ground. Still not able to make out more than a silhouette and thinking this was the landowner or a local, I called out again and waved at the silhouette. It was now approximately 50 to 60 feet from me. A bit confused and thinking that the silhouette did not hear me nor saw me, I moved down the fence line to a small opening cut in the trees for a power line. I stood at the fence waiting and the silhouette moved into the opening. I called out again and froze. The silhouette also froze and turned its head toward me. We stared at each other for 10 seconds or so. No other interaction took place. I then was able to view the silhouette and make out some details. The silhouette stood approximately six to seven feet tall and was covered in long dark brown fur or hair and stood on two legs with a bit of a bend forward. After the brief stare, the witness turned its head back and continued to walk back into the trees and return to his jeep. Officially, I cannot say for sure it was a Bigfoot, only that it was walking upright on two legs had two arms, a chest, and torso, and was covered in long, dark brown fur or hair. There were birds calling out, but no other sounds or smell. It was mid-morning, early afternoon, in a wooded area with a small clearing in a hilly farmland. On to the next one. In Vanderbilt County in Indiana. I was going to feed rabbits I raised when I heard someone walking through the brush. When I looked, I saw a dark figure of what looked like a man. When I said, hello, it swayed from side to side and studied me, then began to approach me. I then could see very deep eye sockets, oddly shaped, and it was covered in black hair. I turned and ran to the house. No sounds were heard. I was 20 feet or less from the creature when I saw it. In a nearby woods, my friend was riding his mini bike. He had stopped to take a break when this creature charged through the woods into the clearing where he was stopped. It was sweating with a beet red face and winded. He started his bike, startling the creature. He took off to home and he also told me of seeing strange feces in a nearby abandoned barn during the same year. I also have a friend who saw the same creature at about the same time that year in a nearby woods. It was between 5 and 6 a.m., very quiet, still just before sunrise, warm and clear. The location was suburban yards between two lakes also nearby wooded, uninhabited by people areas. Siding area connects to large woods, ash, hickory, oak trees, 
there is said to be a small cave in the center of the area. My actual sighting spot was a vacant lot behind home, a very dense thicket that the creature walked through. There was also a railroad right of way in this area. On to the next one. In Fountain County in Indiana, a courting couple saw a tall Bigfoot. They had been kissing in their car and they spotted a large Bigfoot in their car headlights and they both saw it at the same time. It went from the left to the right side of the road in three or four bounds. It had very wide shoulders and looked like the color of a dirty collie dog's hair that was clumped. The creature looked like it weighed 300 pounds and moving in an upright manner. On to the next one. In Jackson County in Indiana, a Bigfoot was seen sulking around in gardens. The witness had gone to the outside toilet at around 11 p.m. and saw the creature standing 25 feet away. There was a dirty, moldy smell as well. He went back inside to get more witnesses, but when they got outside again, the hairy humanoid had gone away. On to the next one. Barbara saw a seven to eight foot tall hairy humanoid standing in a cornfield behind her home. It smelled bad and had dirty white hair. The creature had huge eyes and Barbara believed that it took a chicken that she had thrown into the rubbish pile that morning. Barbara and her husband saw the creature when they were returning from the drive-in theater. It was in the woods beside the road. A few days later, she heard a growling noise outside the house and her dog was barking. When her husband put on the front porch light, the growling stopped but began again on the other side of the house. This was in the Decker Chapel in Knox County in Indiana. On to the next one. My wife and I had a sighting in June at Tipsaw Lake in Perry County in Indiana. We had taken a picnic lunch with us to the park and beach area, only to find it under construction and closed. We did enter the beach area by way of the boat ramp area where we parked our car. The area was closed that day and not a single person or fisherman was on the lake. We had two small boys who immediately began to swim at the end of the beach area next to the boat ramp. My wife and I were under the shade of a tree about 15 yards off the beach watching the boys swim. My wife was putting the picnic together while I was relaxing and looking across the lake. I could see a tall man moving between the poplar trees, very strangely high on the hill near the dam to our right. The boys were having a great time playing in the water, making much noise. The tall, dark man began to move down the hillside to the edge of the water, looking toward our boys in the water. The strange-looking person, or Bigfoot, began pacing back and forth, looking in the direction of our boys. I continued watching, but could not believe what I thought I was seeing. I then stopped my wife and asked her to look toward the dam and tell me what she was seeing. My wife and I observed this being for another minute or two when he stopped pacing and began moving up the dam in a diagonal manner some 1,200 yards away. My wife said, we are leaving. Get the boys and let's get out of here. We then headed back for Crawford County and have never forgotten that day. We returned to Tipsaw for the first time this past summer and looked at the spot that invoked all that fear. Some drivers along the I-64 junction with Highway 37 had made similar sightings at that time. It was about noon. Excellent light. If only I would have had a camera. What a picture that would have been. It was a lake with secondary growth woodland around. On to the next one. When I was younger, I lived in these hills, apart from modern society for many years. We would only leave the house on occasion 
to do errands like getting groceries and allowing my dad to go to work on time. One evening, when the moon was bright but not full, I was waiting outside of our cabin for my mother to return home. I was extremely bored during this time. I estimate that the animal was located around 300 yards distant and was walking up on a ridge. It is moving in a direction perpendicular to me and from right to left as it walks. The moon was reflecting what I thought was a deer, but for some unknown reason, it seemed to almost shine or be whiter than it normally would be. After observing this deer for a few minutes, as it stumbled along, occasionally dipping its head, it started to advance, but its front legs began to move upward in front of its body, and the deer itself appeared to get taller, taller than any person I've ever seen, at least eight feet tall. After this, it began to stagger forward. The forelegs rotated to their sides and transformed into what seemed to be arms at least, that's what I assumed they were. The head of the deer started to turn, and it began to stand with a more erect posture. It remained perfectly steady and balanced on its hind legs for perhaps in the range of five to ten seconds, like some kind of gigantic, horned, pale warrior or something. After that, I blacked out, and to this day, I have never encountered anything even remotely like that. One of the people we were staying with was a Vietnam War vet who was 50 years old, and he claimed to have seen the same thing. There would be nights he would stay up all night banging on pots and pans, saying he was trying to drive it away. We didn't have any guns. When my friends ask me about things that are paranormal or incomprehensible, I usually tell them this tale, since I honestly could not fathom what it was. The majority of people tell me I saw a skinwalker, but I'm not so sure about that, because maybe it could have been a Wendigo. On to the next one. So, I've been seeing this lady for about a month and a half now, and things are getting very well between the two of us. We have a common interest in conspiracies, paranormal phenomena, various forms of spirituality, and other unusual and intriguing topics. Things have a tendency to be more exciting than they are at other times, such as signals from the cosmos reaching out to us and loads of synchronicity when we are together. For instance, she attends church, and I went with her for the first time last week. At the beginning of the pastor's sermon, he addressed both of us directly and said that the message was primarily intended for us. He then went on to talk about some of the topics that we had been discussing on the way up, as well as some other topics that were just pertinent to our past. It was a very big church, so I'm sure there were other people there who didn't know each other except myself. When I'd gone with her to various organic food stands and the like, the sellers have ended up chatting to us about subjects that we had literally just finished talking about on the way up. In addition to that, there has been some unexplained phenomena in the neighborhood of her house, some of which I have seen myself. Just as a little example, that happened to me instead of her. I knocked a teacup onto her windowsill when I was rearranging a stack of egg cartons that she wished to recycle while they were sitting on her window ledge. I straightened it up, stepped away, and not even five minutes later, I observed that it was back to being knocked over in the same position as before. It's just little things like that, but it's occurred so many times that it doesn't seem like a coincidence anymore. I occasionally spend the night at her house, which is located in a central Florida town that is very, very tiny. After we had both finished our shifts at work a few days ago, we went on a little trek together, which was around three miles in length and was located about 15 minutes down the road. Surprisingly, the subject of skinwalkers was brought up just at the moment when we were about to leave. When we finally reached the route, we found that everything was in its usual state. 
the only item of importance was that I saw a coral snake towards the beginning of the route and stopped her and her dog from treading on it. For the benefit of those who are unaware, coral snakes are very poisonous and, as far as I am aware, relatively uncommon. The sight of the snake gave me the all-too-familiar mild heebie-jeebies for a while, but after a while, we moved on regardless of the fact that I don't really enjoy snakes while she doesn't mind them at all. We paused for a while at the place in the route that is directly in the middle, where there is a long bridge that leads to an overlook of a lake, so that we could take in the scenery. It was just before dusk, so the weather was beautiful. We were simply taking a moment to take everything in at that point. I didn't even think about it, but after discussing it with a buddy, I realized that in the minutes before we left, I heard an odd, high-pitched animal sound a few times. It sounded like it was coming from a distance. Although she had been working with a variety of animals for the last several years, none of us were able to correctly identify the sound that she was making. However, she has just recently relocated to Florida, so it is unclear if this is significant or not. Regardless, we make our way down the bridge as quickly as we can, since it is becoming dark very quickly. As soon as we reach the end of the bridge, her dogs begin acting like it is pursuing something, even though there is plainly nothing in front of him, and I can see for a good ways down the path. Her dog is acting like it is chasing something as soon as we get to the end of the bridge. The pit of my stomach starts to fill with a truly horrible sensation, and at the same time, the dog makes a quick right turn towards the woods. As soon as he makes that turn, a deer leaps out from the trees from the left, which is the opposite direction from where he fled, and stops somewhere about 30 feet in front of us on the route. While we are shouting for her dog to come back to us, the deer is standing there, observing us. She and I are yelling for the dog. This very loud machine noise continues getting louder and louder as it goes up and down in volume. I have a strong suspicion that it was an airboat, but nevertheless, it has already contributed to an eerie atmosphere. Even though night is soon approaching, the deer has not moved off the track and is continuing to observe us while we call for her dog. It gives my girlfriend the creeps, and after about five to seven minutes of putting up with it, she finally shouts at it to go. It dashes off into the trees about 20 feet before turning back to continue keeping an eye on us. When we go off the track a little bit in an attempt to call for her dog, the deer eventually gives up and runs away for good, but not before it is followed by a small group of other deer. It's becoming very dark outside so we decide to travel back to the path in case her dog has already completed the loop. This way, neither her dog nor us will end up getting lost. We arrive at the trailhead at precisely the same time as she arrives with her dog. Bear in mind that during this whole time, we have been calling out to him, but he continues to hobble back only to the path and does not seem to react to our cries. It has been roughly 20 minutes since he was last seen which is the longest amount of time she has ever seen him go off, of the few occasions he has done so, and he is undeniably upset now. He is hyperventilating. The back of his neck is coated with saliva. He has a limp from his rear end, his paw is curled, and his focus isn't where it should be. Even if it seems that his eyes are staring your way, you can tell that he's not really seeing you if you stare at him head on. This is the case even though his eyes appear to be focused on you. Again, it is absolutely dark by this time, and it is evident he has to see a veterinarian. So I pick him up and we lug him back to her vehicle, which is around one and a half miles away. We are partly sprinting and running for brief spurts by the flashlight on her phone so that we do not tread on any snakes. Almost the whole way back, 
we keep hearing loud rustling in the area of the woods and fields that we pass through. At the very least, an animal the size of a boar was out there. The fact that I was unable to think of anything else in Florida that would create so much noise contributed significantly to the anxiety that I already felt about the situation. The noise from the machine is also continuing to gradually increase in volume. It was so terrifying that I couldn't help but imagine I was in a horror movie. According to the results of a blood test that he had, it can be concluded without a doubt that her dog was bitten by a snake, most likely a coral snake. Even though we had to go two and a half hours away at 11 o'clock at night to acquire antivenom from the University of Florida, he ultimately turned out to be okay, and we were able to bring him back yesterday. It seemed extremely odd to me that a deer would stop on the route and observe us for such a prolonged period of time, and I thought it was quite odd because the whole thing seemed very wrong in a bizarre manner. Also, there were a lot of hunting blinds scattered throughout the area, so I find it hard to believe that the deer in that region would be very friendly. The dog did not seem to be pursuing anything that I could see, and the path was absolutely free of obstructions for some distance. When he entered the forest, he immediately turned to the right at an acute angle. It was almost as if someone was beckoning to him saying, come this way, and leading him to the snake in that direction. The deer emerged from the woods to observe, very immediately after the dog raced off into the forest. And just before all of this took place, we heard some unusual animal out in the marshes of the lake that sounded like a mammal, but had a higher pitch, not to mention the loud rustle that occurred as we hurriedly made our way out of that place. The obnoxious hum of the machine was undoubtedly not connected to the skinwalker, but it did contribute significantly to the atmosphere of unease. It is possible that it was a skinwalker, but I can't say for sure since so many of the things we speak about end up occurring to us shortly after we discuss them. There were definitely a lot of strange facets to this interaction, that much is certain. Because of this, we really came to an agreement that we would only speak about positive things for a certain amount of time. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day, so be sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!